Hi and welcome. In this session, we're taking a closer look at OpenText Magellan, specifically the tool sets for business analysts, and how we can enable those users to leverage machine learning and artificial intelligence to find and explore data, locate insights, and surface those insights to decision makers within the organization. We all think it often starts with BI, because that's the tool that our decision maker is using to receive this information. Uh, they can certainly explore details by you know, slicing and dicing, drilling down, manipulating charts within a dashboard. And there's lots of power here that we can talk about in another session. But when that slicing and dicing kind of runs out of steam, when it doesn't have the dimensions or has huge volumes of, of data to explore, sometimes every question they have can't be answered. And that's where the business analyst gets involved. In Magellan, the business analyst, though, doesn't typically just use a dashboard. This is a presentation tool for communicating information. In Magellan, they're going to use a tool we call Magellan Data Discovery. Magellan Data Discovery is a purpose-built analytical tool that allows the business analyst to work with this data at huge, absolutely massive data volumes without having to know uh, how to query that you know, data lake or data source in you know, SQL or Spark without having to know how to build and train their own models. They can easily load and explore this data to understand it, perform enrichments as needed, and query that data and, and, and get insights out of it. So let's look at our uh, repository here. I've got a customer table and an accounts table. My customer table has about a million uh, rows in it. And my accounts table has uh, two million and a, and a little extra. Uh, we can actually just look directly at the data in this as if we you know, ran a, like a select star kind of a, a query against this. But I can get more detailed than that. Like, for example, I can go in here and say, well, let's look at my customer ages, right? If I have their numerical age, I can actually chart this information and, and easily see what age most of my customers uh, are. But uh, sometimes for analysis, that may not be particularly useful. What I may need instead is something like an age band. And I can simply create that with a numeric range. So I drag in my age value. I'll create an age band column here. And I can either use the out of the box uh, you know, boundaries that are here and just click create, or I can actually customize those to create these customized ranges if I you know, wanted a unique set of ranges to use, like whatever my organization defines as, as being relevant. But those kinds of enrichments can take hours to build and validate, especially if you're just doing it in a traditional relational database tool. So being able to do that quickly on the fly to support the analysis I'm working on right now is super duper relevant. One of the next things I'm going to be able to do, though, is start analyzing this data. So if I jump down here to the analytics uh, menu, I can do a crosstab. This is probably the most common way to visualize data as a crosstab or a pivot table because it allows me to quickly and easily see and aggregate data across relevant dimensions. So what I'm going to start with here is uh, just dragging in that same age band value that I created. And why don't we look at uh, the products as well? So let's look at our product categories. And I'll flip this uh, uh, chart around a little bit if I can here just to make it a little bit more relevant. So again, here I can see my age ranges across my product categories, or I could you know, flip those if I, you know, if I prefer to see it the other way. This all works incredibly fast, way outside of the scale of data here that I could handle in Excel, but it's intuitive. I can just quickly drag and drop things as needed to be able to, to visualize and explore that data in a, in a way that works for me. Um, what, I, what I might do next is, is actually do a little bit more of an advanced analysis here called a Venn diagram to do a, a set analysis. But let's start by taking that same product category over to explore. Since we've been talking a lot about how this has sort of a, a querying metaphor, uh, what you might typically do is write that select statement. Uh, but if you needed a where clause, you've now you know, got a little bit more complex statement. That's what I can do just by clicking these selections. So if I click on futures planning products, I actually get this little thing that we call a, a segment pulled out uh, from my data set. So it's kind of like a where clause, right? So, you know, select uh, from accounts where product category equals future planning. So I'll do the same thing with insurance and investments. And now I can go run a, a Venn analysis, a set analysis on which uh, products you know, fall into these 
categories. Now you may be unsurprised to see this, uh, but when I'm looking at the accounts table, every entry of course only falls into futures planning category or insurance or investments. As a business analyst, I know I'm not interested in the account information. I'm interested in the customers that hold those accounts. So if I drop this customer table on top, I now immediately see this data update to reflect how many customers own only a futures planning product or a futures planning and an investment product or all three. And one of the best, most useful things about this is that I can layer these selections on top of one another. So I can now click again in this center section and I'll get another Venn uh, segment that allows me to actually see the customers that own all three of these products. Now I'll just quickly rename that uh, so that I you know, have an idea of what that actually is. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and grab a selection for this overlap section, customers that own both a future planning and an insurance product, but noticeably not an investment product. So I'll rename that one as well. Um, just so that I can identify it later. Now I can use all of these selections and I can create them from anywhere within this environment. Just, it, we call it the scratch pad because it's like in math class when you're in grade school. It's a, it's a piece of paper to just kind of write down your selections on, but they're not simple math equations now. They're, uh, you know, really potentially complex selections or layers of selections uh, from, from among our data population. Next, I'm going to run a profile analysis, and, and what this allows me to do is to really look at the statistical strength of the relationship between different values in different columns of my data set. So I'm going to start by uh, comparing the folks that have only two of the three against uh, the, the population that has all three, and I'm going to look at some demographic information here about my customers. So let's do age band, we'll do the number of children, we'll get gender, homeowner, income, marital status, all the things that kind of tell me about this customer. And what you're seeing as I build this list very, very quickly as I drop them in here, you're seeing all these things be calculated uh, with a, this thing we call the Z-score. And a Z-score is a model that looks at the statistical strength of that relationship. So the star tells me that I have a statistically significant number of, of records that say 20 K to 35K in annual income, you know, and that income band is strongly related, uh, you know, to customers that are in, in that selection. So this profile tool is really great for things like recommendation engines and, and doing a, a, a sanity check on whether or not we're targeting the right customers with our uh, products. So let's just look at a couple of other uh, types of analysis that we can do. What I'm going to start by doing is looking next in my accounts table, looking at that investments category against customers that own all three products. So I can actually, this is another way to create and use a, a selection is just to grab that entry from the table and drop it in. You see, I have the option to combine it with the existing um, selection in a number of ways, or in my case, I'll just replace it and rerun that analysis. You'll notice that these run very, very quickly in this environment. This environment is designed to run these kinds of analysis, so they're very, very fast. When I have a question, I can go get that question answered immediately. Let's make one more change. Let's look at our ISA investment product uh, against the investment category. So we'll drop investment category in the bottom and my ISA investment product. If you can't find it, by the way, you can always search for it by starting to type the one you're interested in, right? Pretty handy. Make it easy to do these kinds of analysis. And boom, I've got my analysis now that quickly to be able to tell me which of these values in these columns uh, really strongly relate to customers that uh, you know, do or do not own this particular product and whether or not I should target them with it. This is the kind of thing that would be val valuable for my uh, financial advisor who's got that dashboard. So I can just click here to publish that object. That actually creates a visualization object that I can just drop onto the dashboard for them. Or, or they could go grab themselves. So here I get my little object. I drop it onto the page and now I have that profile analysis available for the consumer of this dashboard to use, uh, you know, in determining whether or not their customer fits the profile. 
Now, what you might be thinking, though, is that sometimes because we've got this really fast purpose built analytical environment, but sometimes I have a model that might be more complex. And the customer that brought this to our attention said, we really need a model that doesn't just say whether or not a customer fits the profile, but goes ahead and runs the analysis and says, how, how likely is this customer going to be to buy this product or, or to select this product? We want a recommendation engine to, to tell us that. Well, what we've done in this case is we've actually built out uh, a, a notebook model. So we engaged a data scientist. They found this familiar notebook environment that allows them to write their model in the language of their choice, the language they're familiar with. And what they can do now is they can pull in their data. They can explore that data and find the right uh, dimensions that, that determine the, the key predictors of whether or not they'll choose that product. They can train that model, do some, some validation testing, and then they can actually finalize that model and publish it into our environment. So what this is literally doing is it's publishing their machine learning predictive model into that data discovery environment. Now, if I want to access it as an analyst, all I need to do is go to where those models are published, and that's here in this Spark gateway. What I see now is when I get into this environment, all of the published models are available to me here where I can actually work with those. Now, the data scientist is probably going to work with those to watch whether or not this model has degraded and do model management. Uh, but I, as the user, as the business analyst, can use it simply to run the model. So I click on this model and I see you know, which uh, values this particular uh, model requires, which input values it needs. And I can go look at, uh, at my data sets and see if I've got the, the, the relevant uh, details here. Let's see where my recommendation model uh, is. Oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Here we go. Customer URN. There we go. So here, let's get uh, my data set here. I'll drag it onto the set. It actually sees, automatically identifies the customer URN, product ID, and products. So you could grab and drag them one by one. And now I can create this as a, as a model uh, result. So we'll just name the table where I want to store my prediction. And this is going to run in real time on top of Spark. So you see there it's thinking as it runs this little model for me. And as soon as it generates a result, that's something that I can now use to, to visualize, push out a customer list, or present that you know, to, the, uh, to the financial advisor, in this case, who wants to determine whether or not they should recommend that product to their customer. And there you see I have, you know, my prediction. So for every single customer you are in, I have a, a prediction on whether or not, you know, that, that product would be appealing to that particular customer. So just like before, I can publish it to their dashboard. Uh, that was a really quick run through. But again, you know, we've purposely designed this environment to be very, very fast, usable for a wide variety of types of analysis so that business analysts can get their arms around it quickly and easily, and that they can use it to answer any of the questions that might come up for them, regardless of how big or complex the data set is, and then to make it easy to, to share those results to end users. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at Magellan at opentext.com.